Today I'm going to be refreshing my entire living room. Being stuck in quarantine and not being able to go out thrifting has been really, really hard for me and my husband. He likes to go thrifting with me too. And we've been spending a lot more time in our living room and I just felt like it really needed to be refreshed. Those of you who follow me on The Recycled Life, you remember last summer how excited I was when I went to a garage sale and I found this incredible, beautiful red rug. I scored it for only $90. Very good. How much are you asking for it? $100. Did you take 80 for it? Take 90. You'll take 90? All right, let's do it. Go, you're in first, maybe? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for a large rug for my living room for quite a while, and I just couldn't find the perfect one. Being a maximalist, I have a lot of different patterns, a lot of different colors going on. I felt like I had too many colors going on. I had the bright mustard yellow chair, the bright red rug, the teal couch, and just felt like it wasn't all jiving together, and I didn't have that calm feeling that I want when I walk into my living room. So I knew it was time to do a complete refresh. The first thing that I did was swap out the rug. I knew immediately taking the red out of the room would kind of calm things down a bit. Red is such a stimulating color and it's beautiful. I love red, but it can be overwhelming and a little bit too powerful sometimes in a space. This huge green rug was such an incredible score. I actually found this at the Goodwill outlet, you guys. It was so large that I think nobody wanted to pay the cost for it. For those of you who haven't shopped the Goodwill outlet or the bins as we call it, you pay by the pound. And so I think a lot of people had just passed right by this rug because it was so big and so heavy, they just didn't wanna fork up the cash for it. But to be able to find a rug this size for $34 to me was absolutely worth it. I feel like the green and the teal colors in the couch work really well together. So I was super happy with that transition. As a maximalist, I love things and I love things everywhere, especially when I can take 20 things and put them together and make it look good. So there's two places that I always do that. The first one is a bookshelf. I always have some type of a shelving unit or a bookshelf in my living room. That's where I can keep all of my smalls and display them beautifully. I can mix and match things. I like to mix pottery, baskets, brass, art, books, candles, all of it. I like to mix it all together and create a little vignette. That's one of my favorite things to do. I am extremely dyslexic. See, I can't even talk. <laughs> I am extremely dyslexic and I have a really hard time physically reading books. I listen to audiobooks daily. I love audiobooks, but physically reading books is really challenging for me. So I like to go to the Goodwill outlet because they have tons of books. They bring out bins full of them and they're usually a buck or two a piece. I always try to find historical books and lots of picture books and design books. Those are my favorite to have coffee table books out. And I feel like you can actually get a really good grasp of the things that I'm very curious about just by looking at my book collection. One tip I would give to any of you that are resellers out there is make sure that you are enjoying the pieces you find. A lot of people go, why are you selling this? Why are you selling this? Why are you selling this? Well, we have to sell them because we have to make a living. But I found over the years, it's really important to put those treasures out and enjoy them. In fact, a couple of these pieces on my bookshelf right now are getting shipped out this afternoon. One of the things that's so fun about having your little trinkets out is that every time I look over at my bookshelf, I can see the memories of finding that little horse in Nebraska with Selena. Show me what you got. Do you know what this might be? This might be a Frederick Weinberg horse or this sweet little Lisa Larson bear gift from my friend Roger in Paris. Some bear. <laughs> or the very first item that I bought from Selena's booth before we were even friends. That's the beauty of buying secondhand and vintage is you're buying a one of a kind item and you've got a beautiful memory tied to it, not just hitting add to cart online. The other place that I love to put all of my things is gallery walls. <music> When 
when I decided to refresh this living room, the one thing that I kept going back to is nature, nature, nature. That's where I wish I could be right now. That's where I wish I could be with my friends is out hiking or out at the beach. When you're putting together a gallery wall, try to have a common theme with the pieces that ties them all together. For those of you who haven't seen Selena's stairway makeover on The Recycled Life, you need to go over and watch that right now because it's so good. Her gallery wall turned out incredible and her common theme was a Pacific Northwest vibe. I grew up a competitive swimmer and I used to say all growing up when I was a kid that water was my natural habitat and I'm just a human being forced to live out of water. So there's something about water that's always been really calming to me in person and in art. So I went with a water theme for this gallery wall. Crater Lake holds a special place in my heart. It was one of my absolute favorite road trips I've ever taken with my husband. It's one of the most beautiful places on earth. The water is so blue. It doesn't even look real. It's incredible. Like when you see it with your own eyes, it just made me cry because it was so beautiful. One of my most recent finds in the living room is actually the rocking chair. This was a Goodwill score. I got it for $7.99. And I walked into the section where the furniture is at and spotted it and basically ran. Like I literally, like jumped like woohoo because <laughs> I knew what it was it's an American made Conant ball furniture company piece and these are really 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 well handcrafted that company originally started making furniture in I think the late 1800s so they know what they're doing and by the time they got around to mid-century furniture they had it dialed down why would you want an Ikea chair that you have to spend hours putting together and it's gonna fall apart in six months or a year for $200, when you can just be patient, find this at a thrift store secondhand. I promise you, it's worth the wait. We watch most of our TV in our basement. Someday I'm gonna show you guys there. We're currently working on remodeling it right now but we have a second TV and it's kind of floats around sometimes between the bedroom and the living room. I decided right now to go ahead and put it in the bedroom because I'm working from home editing and I just thought that would be a good spot for it for right now. The credenza was actually from an estate sale. My husband and I went to go get our platform bed for our bedroom. And as we were taking the bed out, we spotted this in another room and we were like, oh, whoa, hey, is that for sale too? She's like, sure, I hadn't listed it yet. And she was like, how much do you wanna pay? And we're like, I don't know, how much do you want for it? And she's like, $150, we're like, sold, done. Okay, let's talk about my plant stands and my pots for a minute. The black metal one I actually got at Goodwill for $9.99, and I'm pretty sure that that's a modern piece. I don't think it's mid-century, but it kind of has that modernist design. And I really like it because I don't have very much black in here, and it really ties in the fact that we have black walls in the kitchen. That large pot was another Goodwill find, and I think that one was $6.99, and it's a mid-century Ganey pot, which are my favorite ones to collect. Anytime I see those at estate sales or garage sales or thrift stores, I always snatch those up. I have a brown one, I have a black one, I have a green one. I used to have an orange one, but I sold that. And now I have a gray one. Fiberglass bullet planters are one of those things that I'm always on the lookout for, and I found two or three of the holders, but I've never found one with the actual fiberglass for it until I spotted this guy up in Olympia, Washington. $40. I've never found one for under 150, you guys. We love this store, we love this store. That's going in the pile. <laughs> They tend to retail for 100, 150, even $200 at antique stores. So I was so happy that I ended up getting this guy for under 40 bucks. My mustard yellow palo chair was another Goodwill score. And by the way, this is not sponsored by Goodwill, but it probably should be. My husband spotted that one and this was a specific chair that we had seen before on Instagram and we we're like, oh, I want that chair so bad. I wanna find it. I love when they have the exposed wood on the outside. So one random day we finally find it and unfortunately it is not in a color that I've ever used in my decor before. I have literally never used yellow. I actually really don't like yellow. At least the mustard yellow helps a little bit. It's not that bright daffodil yellow, but my husband and I love this chair and we are determined to make it work.
That was a really good day picking. We scored that for only $24.99. Funny story about our coffee table. So this is a 1980s oak coffee table. I'm not a huge fan of it. I do like the fact that it's glass top and has the double layer underneath so I can put books or little plants or whatever I want down there. So I didn't really love this and I had several other coffee tables at the time that I loved more. I decided to list it on Facebook Marketplace and it sold within an hour. And so I texted my husband and I was like, guess what? I just sold this coffee table for $140. And he goes, what? You sold my coffee table? And I was like, what? Oops. What are you talking about, babe? And he was like, that was my favorite coffee table that you've ever brought home in all these years of picking. And I had no idea. I mean, he said he liked it, but I didn't, I didn't know he loved it. So I felt a little bit guilty about it and I was out picking and within two weeks, I found another one at the Goodwill outlet. This one was five bucks. Brought it home, my husband was happy, we're good. It is not my favorite coffee table we've ever had. I've definitely gone through a few more that I regret selling and I miss and I'm still on the lookout for, but for now, the husband gets his coffee table. When you're putting together a space, one of the tips that I have is to use lots of different textures and materials. I use baskets on my walls. I use baskets on my kitchen shelves. I use baskets on my bookshelves. Try mixing together lots of different elements. Have some hard elements like brass. Have some beautiful handmade pottery and a woven basket. And then of course plants everywhere, lots of plants. One of the oldest and most special pieces I have here in my living room is the mirror from my great great grandmother. My mom gifted this to me when we got our new home and it's kind of hopped around from room to room and I think it's the perfect accent to mix into a gallery wall. I'm always mixing different shapes together to kind of create a more interesting look. I scored my dream mid-century clock for 75 bucks in Nebraska last fall and I literally cried when I found this thing. I just want to cry right now. Like this is my favorite little story I've ever been in. I just found my dream clock. Cry. <laughs> I'm so happy because it's got the balls on it. Another one of my favorite pieces in this living room that is a forever piece, I'm never gonna sell it, is my lamp. My living room may change a thousand times over the next couple years, but I guarantee you one thing, that lamp is never going anywhere. I'm always switching out my pottery. Sometimes I'm selling pieces, sometimes I'm just switching from room to room. And one piece that stays in this living room because I need to keep a close eye on it and keep it safe is Sven, my Lisa Larson cat. You guys are not gonna believe what just happened. I just found the number one thing in the entire world that I was looking for, a Lisa Larson cat. Okay, my hands are actually shaking right now because I just found my first Lisa Larson cat. I almost cried in a goodwill. I think I told like every single employee, I was like walking around hugging my cat and people were like, cute cat. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> Anyways, I can't even hide my excitement. I'm so happy. This is going to go on my bookshelf at home. You guys, $4.99. These things retail for like $400, so. <sighs> Fuzzy, do you wanna meet your new brother, Sven? What do you think? What do you think, guys? This guy was so cool. I found him at Relics Marketplace last year and it said on the tag that he was from the 1880s. I don't know if he's really that old because he has such a modernist shape to him, but he's so funky and weird. Love this guy. We typically have him kind of just peeking around the corner from our TV. It cracks me up because sometimes I look up there and I think it's my cat Lorenzo. I can't forget to talk about the couch. So many people have asked about this couch. I did thrift it and I did get it secondhand. It's by the company Joy bird i got it at salvation army for 500 dollars, which does still sound like a lot and it is but i love this couch and it was such a score these things sell for almost two thousand dollars retail those of you who've had vintage furniture before you know that finding a good chair and a good couch that's actually comfortable can be hard sometimes having a modern vintage inspired piece especially when it's still thrifted and secondhand is okay I've always been kind of a rule breaker growing up. I don't like to listen to rules. I don't like to be told how I should and shouldn't design. I like to just have that freedom to be creative and do what I think looks good to me. And one thing I've always done when it's in style and when it's not in style is mixing metals. 
I scored these little mid-century brutalist candle holders for only a dollar a piece at an estate sale. And I love the fact that you can just pop the candles in so easy. This pewter candle holder is so special to me because it is the one and only mid-century modern piece I have ever thrifted in Italy. My sweet friend Michelle and I were working on a public art project over in Carrara, Italy, and we were on our way to work one day with my uncle driving, and we drove by this little antique store, and we were like, stop! And he's like, what, what? And we just jump out of the car. We're like, we'll meet you at work. He's like, it's a mile away. And we're like, doesn't matter. We're gonna walk because we had to go into that antique store right then. Oh, mio Dio. <laughs> Michelle. It's only nine euro. Oh, look at this jade necklace I found. For nine euro. And then I'm getting I think this is real Probably is. That's beautiful. 60 euro, 50 euro, 50 euro. That's beautiful. Yeah. 25 euro. Look at that, you guys. I just found my necklace. Oh, wow. My aunt thought we were absolutely crazy and she couldn't believe that we actually found our way back to the shop. These pillows are actually antique hand woven grain sacks from Peru. I scored these on an online auction for $25. These end up floating around my home a lot. They've been used as actual cushions on chairs before. I put them in my bedroom sometimes. I've got them here in my living room. They're so big that they make great floor pillows on the ground to sit on. One design tip that I would give for people who buy everything secondhand is don't strive for perfection. Don't strive for symmetry. So instead of trying to find two of the exact same things, try to find things that don't exactly match, but they work together because it balances out and it makes it look intentional. For example, there's two different grain sacks with two different patterns and colors, but they're both the same size. So I mixed it with some other vintage pillows that are the same color, but they're completely different. Now, if I was designing an entire space from scratch and I was buying new product and I had, you know, the entire internet accessible at my fingertips, I might not pick a teal couch to go with a mustard yellow chair. However, I have thrifted 100%, literally every single thing in this room, except for the plants. Everything else has been thrifted, and I'm pretty proud of how it all is coming together. The thing about thrifting is you can't just go one time to one store and assume that you're going to get everything that you need to completely transform a space. It takes time. But you have to have patience and you have to go a lot and don't look past things. Every time I'm in a thrift store and I put things in my cart and I get to the checkout stand, I have so many people compliment like, where did you find all those things? But the truth is that they walked past them. So make sure you're really looking at things and you're thinking about how they can be used in your space. You gotta just slow down, take your time, and you're gonna find those hidden gems. This Italian pottery I found four years ago and I cannot believe that I had it hiding in a cupboard that entire time. I think I was waiting to put it in the perfect space with the perfect plant. This downtime in quarantine has actually given me time to go through my shop and all my inventory. And I'm so glad that I pulled this out. I'm so glad I decided to refresh this room. Since I've had time to actually go through my shop and all of my inventory, I've been able to find pieces that I had that I didn't even remember that I had. I'm going to be having a huge sale with new items that I've collected over the last couple years. And the sale is gonna go live on June 5th at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So don't forget to go to my website and subscribe so that you don't miss out when the sale launches. Thank you so much for watching today. Leave a comment below and let me know what your favorite thing that I thrifted in this space was and let me know what would you guys do differently we'll see you in the next episode
I was just getting ready to put the final touch, the very last thing in my living room, a little plant in that swivel hanger and it swiveled too much and it fell. And now I'm not ready to finish filming. Oy vey. Okay, let's try this again.